Hi everyone, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time here, my name is Shane. Uh, this video is basically an introduction to three different playlists that we have here at the Coding Zoo. Uh, the playlists are one for CSS, one for HTML, and one for JavaScript. Uh, these three different playlists will do deep dives into those uh, technologies one feature at a time. They should be five to 10 minute short videos. So this video is kind of an introduction to those playlists. Um, you'll find a copy of it in each of the playlists. I want to go ahead and walk you through setting up your environment so when you get ready to start those playlists, you'll be ready to go. Um, I also wanted to give you a quick introduction on what HTML is, what CSS is, and what JavaScript is. So let's do that real quick, and then we'll jump into creating your environment. <music> So let me bring up um, my browser here. So I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to open up this coding zoo folder and I'm going to open up this index.html file. Okay, so as you can see here on my screen, I have this basic HTML file. HTML basically stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Uh, what that means is that it basically is a way to describe data, to, to mark it up to where uh, you're describing data. So HTML was invented uh, to send data across the internet and to provide um, tags or elements that describes that data, that marks it up and explains what that data is. So if I look at this index.html page, um, I have some basic data on the screen. Uh, I've got a title here, another title, and, and a couple of sentences, right? If I go to the code for this, go to index.html, right-click, choose Edit with Notepad++. If you look at this code, you'll see that I have HTML, and they have these tags, these elements, around my data. For example, this H2 tag is around the lesson will explain the difference in the two. So h2 is basically just an element that describes the data it's not really uh, these tags aren't really meant to be for uh, changing the look and feel although the some of the tags will do that with the browsers but their main purpose is to actually uh, explain what the data is we should use html for just describing the data if we go over to our style sheets which is called css Cascading style sheets. Cascading style sheets is what we should use to actually change the look and feel of our data. It's what marks the data up to uh, look differently or be rearranged differently uh, or change the color, uh, change the darkness. That's what cascading style sheets are for. Style sheets are for changing the look and feel. So HTML is for transferring the data and describing it. Style sheets is for changing the look and feel of the data once you've transferred it. And next you have JavaScript. Well, if I go back to this index page here, you'll see that I have some JavaScript at the very top, with this function called chain CSS. Well, JavaScript is a way uh, to make your HTML document have behavior, to make it do something. So let's check this page out. Let's see all three of those things working together. So let me go back to the browser. Here's my, here's my simple HTML data here. I haven't styled it any except with the H1, H2 tags, right? So we have this simple bolding and my text is just looks like regular text. So I created these three links down here at the bottom. There's one that says no style sheet. I'll click on that and you see what we have here. We don't have any styling. We just have the plain HTML. It's just data. All right, I'm going to click on style sheet number one. And boom, you'll see that um, all of the, the, the style, the look and feel changed. You actually have color, you have depth, you have boldness, things are separated. My two paragraphs here turned into radio buttons. Everything looks totally different. So I changed the look and feel. I did that by applying a style sheet to this document. Now, how did I make this link? apply a style sheet to my document. Well, I did that through JavaScript. I used JavaScript to add behavior. So I added a link to my document 
and that link has behavior. And that behavior is, is to change the style sheet that works with the HTML. If I go down to the bottom one here to style sheet two and click on it, boom, I change the style again, right? I'm using JavaScript for behavior to make that link do something. And what it's doing is it's actually changing the style sheet behind the scenes. So when I say change the style sheet, if I go back to my notepad over here, you'll see that I have a style one CSS and I have a style two CSS and I have a style sheet that's basically none. There's no style tags in there. There's no CSS tags in there. So basically I'm making the JavaScript switch between these three style sheets and apply it to this HTML data. That's how I'm getting the different looks and feel. So this is basically all three of those technologies working together. One to provide and describe the data, which is HTML. One to give it a, uh, the style, the you know, layout and color, which is CSS, cascading style sheets. And the other is JavaScript, which it gives it behavior. That's basically how the three technologies complement each other. That's how they work together. So one more time, let me go back to the browser. Okay, I'm gonna click style sheet one. It's going to launch behavior, that behavior is gonna change the style sheet to style sheet one. And now my look and feel has changed. Now you'll notice all of the data on the page is the same data, I'm just displaying it differently. Style sheet two again, looks, looks totally different, right? Looks better. And back to no style sheet. And there's my just my plain HTML. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, just drop me a message below. Uh, let's jump into uh, actually creating our environment. So I'm going to go here to my desktop. Okay, I'm going to right click, choose new and folder. And I'm going to call this coding zoo or call it whatever you like. If you're doing the CSS lessons, maybe call it coding zoo CSS. If you're doing the JavaScript lessons, maybe call it coding zoo JavaScript. I'm going to call it coding zoo CSS. Okay, so I've created a folder. I'm going to go inside that folder. I'm going to right click, choose new, choose folder, and I'll name it CSS. CSS. So this is where we're going to put our style sheets at. I'm going to right click, choose new, to folder, I'm going to name it JavaScript or JS. Let's use JS. One more time. Oh, that's it. Let's right click and choose new and choose text document. Um, and let's create an index.html. So if your text document doesn't show an extension here, if you're in Windows, you want to go to view and you want to make sure you have file name, show file name extensions checked so you can see the extensions. So I have a text document here. I'm going to rename it completely into index.html. Okay, choose yes. All right, so now I have a CSS folder, a JS folder, and a file called index.html. All right, so I'm gonna edit. I'm gonna right click on the index.html. You can choose to open with Notepad, or I'm, I'm gonna use Notepad++. Okay, so now I'm in Notepad++, and I'm going to go ahead and create a, um, HTML document. So type in HTML tag. So less than HTML greater than sign. Press enter. Put the ending tag. So less than forward slash to the right. HTML greater than sign. So now I have two elements there. I'm going to go back underneath the HTML tag. Tab out. I'm going to type in less than H E A D for head and less than forward slash H-E-A-D to end that. And then I'm gonna go down to the next row and we'll type in less than and the body element. So B-O-D-Y greater than, and then I'm gonna close it off. So less than forward slash B-O-D-Y and then greater than. So now I have a head section, a body section and an HTML section. Okay. So next thing I'm gonna do is go over and to the head. And in the head, 
I am going to link. I'm going to put my cursor between the two tags and the head element. Press enter. I'm going to add a line in between those two uh, tags. And I'm going to add a link tag. So less than L I N K. Space R E L equals quote that's a double quote rather the world the word style sheet s t y l e s h e e t in quote in the double quote space and then type t y p e equals double quote the word text t e x t forward slash c s s in the double quote space href h r e f equals double quote c s s forward slash style s t y l e dot c s s in double quote forward slash so it's a slash leaning towards the right and then greater than sign Okay, so there we go. We have an HTML document. It has a head and a body, and it has a link to a style sheet. We haven't created that style sheet yet, but we'll do that next. Okay, so this is kind of a, a template, and what I recommend that you do is at each video lesson, if you're doing CSS lesson one, go ahead and make a copy of this template and do lesson one and call the folder lesson one. If you're doing lesson two, Go ahead and copy the folder and call it lesson two. And that way, as you learn each element or each feature, you'll have a copy of that lesson. So if you need to go back and, and look at it and see, hey, how did I do that feature? You'll have a folder that has just that feature. So um, let's go ahead and save. And now I'm going to go and create that file. It's called style. Dot CSS. So I'm going to go back to desktop, go into that coding zoo folder. Okay. Double click on the CSS folder. I'm going to right click, choose new text document. And then I'm going to rename it to style.css. S T Y L E dot CSS. And there we go. So if you look at my folder here, I have a coding zoo CSS folder. It has a CSS folder inside of it. It has a JavaScript folder inside of it or a JS folder inside of it. Uh, and it has an index.html file. And if I go on my CSS, I'll see that I have a styles.css a style.css inside of it. Um, so that's that's my template. Now, when we get into the JavaScript, if you're in the JavaScript video uh, series, we'll go ahead and actually put a file in that JavaScript folder. Um, so this is your template. Make a copy of it, and then each time you start a video lesson, uh, just make a copy of it and use that new copy for that lesson and rename your main folder. If it's called Coding Zoo CSS, rename it to Coding Zoo Lesson 1 or Coding Zoo CSS 1 or coding zoo CSS 2, something like that. And that way you'll always have a backup of each lesson. You can go back and see how you did that feature. Okay, so that's to cover it. If you have any questions, um, any comments, leave them below. If you like this video, go ahead and click like. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell and we'll let you know when new videos come out. We hope you enjoy the series. We're always open to uh, making it better. So we'd love your feedback. Come back and see us. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.